place left on a napkin. This is Carter Cox here in Oklahoma City. Um, and today we're going to be learning a tool uh, called Paul's Journeys. Uh, we're gonna learn how to share it in about five to 10 minutes. So uh, if you get a napkin, So let's begin, um, Acts 1-8, down here in Jerusalem. Jesus says, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, what happens, Acts 2, the Holy Spirit comes, they proclaim the gospel, disciples are being made, churches are being formed, and the wake of the gospel is going out. But by the time Acts 8-1 gets around, the gospel has really not gone outside of Jerusalem very far. Um, we know some believers were in Damascus up here because uh, Paul was on his way there to persecute them. But outside of that, the gospel just was not making it out of Jerusalem. Um, so God sent persecution through Paul, um, through uh, Stephen being um, uh, murdered, and Paul approved of the, of the execution. In Acts 8, it says that they're scattered throughout um, everywhere throughout uh, Judea, Samaria, uh, Phoenicia, uh, all the way over to Cyprus. Um, and uh, even some, by Acts 11, come to Antioch and they speak to the Hellenists and they believe. Um, many of them believe. And so the Church of Jerusalem sends Barnabas up to Antioch to check out what's going on. And sure enough, they start a church. So Paul, who or Saul, who's now Paul, who's over in Tarsus for 14 years, Barnabas goes and gets him, and they begin to coach this church to health. Um, so by Acts 13, uh, this church lays hands and sends Paul off and Barnabas, and also John Mark, to the uh, work that the Lord had called them to. Uh, they go down to Cyprus, proclaim the gospel, they enter in, they share the gospel uh, throughout the whole island. God does the sign and wonder by blinding a dude named Bar Jesus who was trying to prevent the gospel from going to the proconsul, but the proconsul believes. And they uh, actually leave uh, in peace. There's no persecution. So they get here to, uh, I believe it's Perga, Pamphylia. John Mark goes back to Jerusalem. And then they go on their inland journey through Galatia. So I'm just going to write G A L. Uh, within Galatia, we have Antioch and Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. So. Paul and Barnabas enter into Antioch, and this is where you see the first kind of uh, real gospel presentation um, or detailed gospel presentation uh, from Paul and Barnabas. They kind of move from Abraham to Christ with the Jews in the synagogue. Um, by the end of the presentation, the Jews, some say that they follow Paul and Barnabas, but they were also interested to hear the next Sabbath. So the next Sabbath, they again uh, proclaim to the whole city, um, and the Jews begin to oppose, but uh, the Gentiles receive it. Um, and they begin to spread the word throughout the whole region. So we see entry, gospel, and discipleship, and even spreading the word throughout the region. So uh, because of the persecution, Paul and Barnabas shake the dust off their feet and go to Iconium. Same kind of thing, enter the synagogue, as was Paul's pattern, share the gospel. Uh, disciples are made, uh, but persecution happens again. Uh, they go to Lystra, same deal, except here, with, there was a lot of Greeks, and they begin to worship Paul and Barnabas as Greek gods because they healed a crippled man who had faith. Um, in the name of Jesus. And so uh, the Jews from Antioch and Iconium actually come here to Lystra and stone Paul. But nonetheless, we know that there's disciples made because it said the disciples gathered around Paul um, after he was stoned and Paul rose back up and went into the city. Finally, they shake the dust off their feet again and go to Derby, where it says they proclaimed the gospel and made many disciples. They could have gone through Tarsus and back to Antioch. They're pretty close, but uh, it was important for Paul. He, his work was not finished until he was starting churches. So he went back and it said in every one of the churches, they strengthened the disciples and they appointed elders with prayer and fasting. So after each of these towns had established churches with elders um, through prayer and fasting, Paul and Barnabas then returned home. The only place they didn't return back to is Cyprus, and we'll see why in a second. So that's Acts 13, 14. Uh, then Acts 15 is the Jerusalem Council. They go down, talk about the debate over circumcision, go back up um, with Silas and um, uh, another guy, I can't remember his name, I think it's Judas. Um, but long story short, they stay here for a while, and then they decide, Paul and Barnabas, to go back through the areas where they proclaim the gospel to follow up. Follow up was important to Paul. And so uh, they decide, but there's a team conflict um, over John Mark, and so uh, Barnabas and John Mark follow up to Barnabas' home island of Cyprus, where the proconsul believed. 
And then Paul and Silas actually head on the inland journey through back through Galatia where they had started the first churches. Um, before they actually went, I forgot to mention that Paul, he wrote the letter of Galatians to these churches. The letter most likely circulated throughout these churches um, right before the Jerusalem Council. So we see Paul is uh, coaching and writing these churches at a distance uh, through writing the letter of Galatians. So then he comes and he follows up, Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Antioch. As a matter of fact, they're in uh, Lystra, um, or Derby, uh, Timothy, um, who has come to Christ through the wake of the gospel moving out in this area. Um, and Paul wants him to join and be a part of the team. So uh, has him circumcised, and uh, then he joins up with Paul, and um, they begin to continue through these towns. And they're actually delivering the observances from the Jerusalem Council for these churches to obey. So Paul is teaching these churches to obey Jesus. Um, it says that the uh, Holy Spirit forbid them to speak a word throughout Asia, um, and uh, we'll see why here in a second. But they get to Troas, where Luke most likely lives, since the pronoun changes from Luke writing Acts about they to writing about we and us. Paul gets the vision about a man in Macedonia um, who's saying, come over and help us. So Paul, whenever he hears people need help, he knows that they need the gospel. So they go there, enter into Philippi. Um, there's no synagogue at that point, so they go by the place of prayer at the river, and the Lord opens Lydia's heart to listen to Paul and Barnabas' message. She and her whole household believe and are baptized. So we see a church begins to start here. Um, after going to the place of prayer again, and there's this demon-possessed girl that keeps on uh, bothering Paul and Barnabas, they cast the demon-possessed girl out, and um, because the parents were really jealous, they have Paul and Silas beaten and thrown into jail. But while they're in jail, um, again, no opportunity uh, to not work for the kingdom. Paul and Barnabas are singing hymns, praise to God. And um, an earthquake happens, and uh, the Philippian jailer through this ends up believing he and his whole household believe and are baptized. So we see at least two families here, um, if not more, um, believing and being baptized. Um, so church starting. They leave here and go to Thessalonica, where they are there for literally three Sabbath days, it says. Um, but in those three Sabbath days... Um, we see uh, Jason receives them in and is even persecuted for receiving the message of the gospel and Paul and Barnabas. Um, but they, again, leave, go to Berea, entry gospel, church start here with Jason's house. And um, at Berea, uh, because of the plots of the Jews, uh, Silas and Timothy, who's joined up, actually send Paul away down to Athens. And so while Paul is waiting in Athens, uh, he's sending um, and waiting for uh, Timothy and Silas to regroup. There in Athens we have the famous gospel presentation to the Athenian philosophers um, and, uh, on Mars Hill and some of them mock Paul so we see red lights. Uh, some of them say you know we'll hear you again and then there's also green lights some who said that we're gonna follow you and so Paul leaves here and he goes to Corinth. Um, he says that it was a, he was a tent maker here. We also know from the letter of Thessalonica, Thessal, First and Second Thessalonians, which Paul wrote from Corinth back to this church. He sent with Timothy that Paul was also working up here in Thessalonica. So uh, as Paul is here, he's working, uh, make, being a tent maker. Timothy and Silas regroup, writing letters back and forth to Thessalonican churches. Um, and while he's here, again, he enters into the synagogue, proclaims the gospel. The Jews um, do not want to believe, so he leaves and goes next door to Titius uh, Justice's house. Um, and um, the synagogue leader ends up actually uh, believing. And so they start a church here in Corinth. So we got Priscilla and Aquila that he's coaching, the synagogue leader and his household who are baptized. Um, and it actually says here that Jesus came to him in a vision and told him to stay here for a whole um, what seems like a year and a half because he said there were many people in the city. So after being here a year and a half, Paul decides to leave. He takes with him Priscilla and Aquila across over to Ephesus where the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit first prevented him to speak a word. So he drops Priscilla and Aquila off here. He heads back to Jerusalem, back up to Antioch, and on the third journey, uh, he heads on his inland journey all the way through the churches, again, just passing through what he had already established um, to Ephesus. So uh, this is Acts 19. So again, Acts 13, 14 here. We have movement breaking out. Um, Acts 16, 17, and 18. Um, we have movement breaking out in Macedonia. 
through entry gospel, discipleship, and appointing leaders, movement obviously breaking out throughout Achaia, through Corinth. And on the third journey, he's headed right here to the middle, so the gospel gap. There's movement here, movement here, uh, but no movement in Asia. So we know anywhere on the low end of 5 million to the high end, 8 to 15 million people live in the province of Asia. And Paul goes back to Ephesus and says he finds some disciples of John still proclaiming John's gospel. Um, they're saying, make way for the Messiah. And they had never heard of the Holy Spirit uh, because they had never believed in Jesus. But after they uh, heard the gospel, they believed in Jesus, they were baptized. And then Paul began to, it says for three months, he um, exhorted uh, the, the Jews in the synagogue. But after some became obstinate um, and they weren't wanting to believe, uh, Paul, he went to the hall of Tyrannus, Luke, I mean, uh, Acts 19, 8 through 10, and it says for two years, um, we just got to write it down, two years, uh, he, this continued, he was training, equipping, mobilizing out of the hall of Tyrannus, these, these, these people actually wanted to follow Jesus, and uh, in two years it says all, Luke 19, 10, all the Jews and Greeks, um, which is anywhere from 5 to 15 million uh, people heard the word of the Lord. So we see that movement is breaking out from Ephesus. Uh, we also know that not only did they hear the word of the Lord, but we know that there was church planning that takes place because when we look at Revelation 1, 2, and 3, we see the churches in Asia, seven specifically. These seven different churches are in Asia uh, that were started in the wake of the movement, uh, most likely. And even these churches, which were started as a result of entry, gospel, discipleship, church, leadership, um, appointment, these churches were not perfect. They were not um, completely healthy. As a matter of fact, the only two churches it says are healthy, one is facing persecution. Um, I believe it's the church at Smyrna. And then one is um, obeying the word of God. I believe that's the church of Philadelphia. Um, Paul's here for, it seems, a total of three years, according to um, Acts uh, 20. But Paul follows back through in Acts chapter 20, back through looking for Titus and Troas, then follows back through these churches goes all the way over, and it says he stays in Greece, or most likely Corinth, for three months during the winter. And while he's in Corinth, he writes the book of uh, Romans um, to this church that he has not started. Now remember, he's entry gospel disciples of church leadership, and then wrote Galatians from Antioch. Entry gospel discipleship, uh, uh, leadership appointment, and then writes First and Second Thessalonians. Entry Gospel Discipleship Church Leadership Development, and then from Ephesus he writes 1 Corinthians, from Philippi he writes 2 Corinthians. So we see that um, Entry Gospel Discipleship um, Church and Leadership Development happened before any of the epistles happened. The Acts is the timeline for the epistles. Um, so, um, but while he's here, he writes the first letter to a church that he did not directly start, except he knows everybody there, including Priscilla and Aquila, who are in Rome at this point, who have a church in their home. Um, and he's writing to them, um, exhorting them. And one of the things he says in Romans uh, 15, you can start in verse 18 and read all the way through 24, but specifically in verse uh, 23, he says uh, that there is um, from Jerusalem all the way to Illyricum, uh, which Illyricum is uh, probably somewhere up here. Um, so from here all the way up here, 25 to 30 million people in this area, um, 65 million people in the entire Roman Empire, but just this area about 25 to 30 million people. He says there is no further places for me to work. So that's where we get our vision for no place left. And we know that Paul can say uh, confidently that the task is finished in these areas, not just because he entered in, not just because he shared the gospel, not just because he um, made disciples, but he actually got to church formation and leadership development in all these areas. And we actually see this pretty clearly when Paul, after the three months in Corinth, I mean, um, he goes back to Troas and he has a leadership meeting. If you look at where the leaders are from, they're from all the places that he had started churches. You've got um, a couple of guys uh, from uh, uh, Thessalonica, you've got a guy from Berea, uh, you've got a couple guys from Asia, uh, you've got Timothy obviously still from Lystra, a guy from Derby, Silas who's down here at Jerusalem, and they're at Luke's house. So Paul has gathered all these leaders from across the movement.
And then he goes down and there's his, his famous capstone speech to the, didn't go to Ephesus, but he goes to Miletus right down here. Um, and he calls for the Ephesian elders and he begins to exhort them. It's really cool if we peek in, just like if we want to see the intricacies of Paul's gospel, we would look back at the church at Antioch where Luke wrote in detail how Paul shared the gospel. If we want to see Paul's leadership development, how he exhorted leaders, we'd look in Acts 20 uh, to look at what he said to that, the elders at Miletus from the church of Ephesus. Um, so really cool. Uh, after obviously we know the uh, talk with the elders in Miletus, Paul knows he's going to go to Rome. That's where Jesus is calling him to go. He didn't know how he's going to get there, but gets back to um, F I mean Jerusalem, and then we know that he proclaims the gospel. He's arrested, and so begins his journey all the way to Rome, uh, where he's imprisoned and writes the rest of the epistles. So that's Paul's journeys. Uh, I guess the biggest questions in light of Paul's journeys we can ask uh, we know he's um, obviously um, abiding throughout his entire journey, talking with Jesus, staying connected to him. But as he's abiding, he's doing five intentional things. He's doing entry. So how are we entering in? What's our target fields? How are we engaging lost people? He's sharing a very clear gospel message up front. So how are we sharing the gospel? How are we equipping believers and new believers to share the gospel? He's teaching people to obey Jesus, which is discipleship. We specifically see this in his letters to Galatians. We see this in his letters to First and Second Thessalonians. We see this letters to First and Second Corinthians. And even in Romans, we see he's very specific about getting people to obey Jesus. We see he gets to church. I know this is really bad handwriting, but again, in abiding entry gospel, discipleship church, so he formed churches. There's no other name for a uh, gathering of believers in the New Testament. Um, it's just church. Gathering of baptized believers is church, period. Um, Paul references Church of Galatia, so a province, church of a city. That, when he talks about um, the churches in Corinth, and then church in people's houses. We know there's churches mentioned in people's houses here in Ephesus in 1 Corinthians 16, and churches in people's houses in Romans 16 with Priscilla and Aquila. Um, you can also look in Colossians and see um, that there's a church meeting in a home um, in Philemon as well. So, church. Paul got to church, and finally there's leadership. Um, so, Paul not only was um, appointing local leaders, pastors, and shepherds in each of these churches, but he had an apostolic band with him. Like, Timothy's a good example, or he snatched him up and brought him with him. Um, so, he, Paul is never alone. The only time he's alone is in um, Athens, um, but he's waiting um, in a way, watching at a distance as Timothy and Silas are doing the work that um, he's, he's let them remain there to do. So, Paul, he's, he's doing leadership development the entire time, whether it's raising up local leaders or, or training this apostolic band as he goes from place to place to um, advance the kingdom. So, this is Paul's journeys. Now that's probably a lot. Um, the best way, if you really want to learn to tell this story, is simply to get in and read over and over and over again, Acts 1 through 20. You can read the whole book of Acts if you like, but specifically Paul's journeys. If you want to start at Jerusalem, start at Acts 1. If you want to start from Antioch, start at Acts 13 and read Acts 13 through 20 over and over and over again and become familiar on how to draw this map. Hope this tool serves you well. God bless. Keep advancing the gospel until there's no place left.